Hello everyone, back to you in a second video. So we're going to do the CFS six months look ahead for today's second video. As the name suggests on the team, we're going to go six months ahead with the long range CFS V2 model. And it's going to take us from next month, from January right way through to June. We go through to the start of the summer of 2019 uh, with this update. So, um... It's just for fun. I mean, the first month or two, there is some scientific merit about what we're doing. Hopefully, if the model is performing correctly, January and February might have uh, a reasonable degree of accuracy. But as you go sort of three, four, five and six months out, then obviously uh, reliability is going to crash. And it's just a snapshot, really, of what the model is showing uh, today when we're doing the video. But uh, it might look very, very different in a month's time. But I'll talk you through all of the charts. Uh, the charts are there, so you might as well look at them. I'll talk you through the 700 bit of our heights and then the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights uh, for the next six months. Just say that earlier on today, we released the uh, week to 10 day video update. Got all of the latest in terms of the sudden stratospheric warming. Tonight, a couple of hours time, we'll have the 24th and final uh, Christmas update. No weekend forecast today. It's been pushed back from today through to Christmas Eve uh, because... We always have weekend forecasts on Christmas Eve covering the full, um, covering the full Christmas week. So uh, weekend forecasts will be with you on Monday. Talk you through tomorrow's videos at the end of this one. So we're going to start off with the 700 bit of our height to anomalies for the next six months. We're beginning with January. So this is how CFS V2 is forecasting January uh, to be in terms of the height anomaly. And most evidently, and most interestingly, we've got a very strong northern blocking signal being forecast for January here across Greenland. Volume is going for a large area of above average height centred over uh, Greenland to the north of the British Isles. And the UK is under this trough of below average heights and that extends through to our east as well. It does also back out into the Atlantic and also onto the east coast of America. So this will be a cold signal for east and parts of America. The jet stream will then be coming across the Atlantic rather like that. It looks like the jet stream is on a southerly track and you would expect to be pulling cold air down into that trough of below average heights. So I'm sure when I show you the temperature anomalies in a moment, it will still be going for a mild of an average month because CFS has to be dragged kicking and screaming to forecast anything cold. But with such a strong northern blocking signal as we've got there over green, I mean, anything can happen with the weather, but with such a strong northern blocking signal as we've got there over Greenland. We will have to be very unlucky, I think, to come away with a mild of an average month with such a strong uh, block of high pressure over Greenland. And then this goes on into February. So January, February, looking very, very interesting now. CFS V2, again, a large area of above average heights blocking things out over Greenland. Uh, and it also extends to like the north of Scandinavia up towards Svalbard. Then we've got this trough of below average height centred over the top of the UK and to our east once again. So once more, you would expect to be entrenching cold air into that trough of low pressure. It looks like the jet stream should be on a southerly track as well. You would expect January and February to both have appreciable amounts of cold weather, really cold and wintry conditions in both January and February with that kind of level of northern blocking as we're seeing there, centred over top of Greenland. So very, very interesting for January and February from a height perspective. This is how March is on. Now this is month three, so obviously reliability is beginning to tumble away. So March finds an area of below average height centred just out to the west of the UK, and that leads us bringing in this westerly uh, flow. So March, the northern blocking is um, easing, it's moving towards the north of Scandinavia, so it is still there to some degree, but it looks like in March we're reverting back to a more normal pattern really western is, south is coming back so a milder, but also rather unsettled month probable, with that area below average heights just west of the UK in March April month four looks like this. So now we are getting into the realm of this just being uh, just for fun. But we find again an area of below average heights out to the northwest of the UK. Above average heights are down to the south. 
the flow and the jet goes something like that. So March, April, both shaping up to be rather westerly, rather unsettled, not overly so, it's not a deep area of below average heights that we've got there, but both months sent, uh, spathered to be rather unsettled and rather westerly too. Uh, and then we've got to go through to month five, which I haven't got up for some reason. So that's how month five is looking, May. And the 700 bit of our height anomaly for May looks rather weak, really. Not a lot to go. That's often the case with May. Uh, actually, it's one of the months that is tricky to forecast with these models. Uh, it has above average heights to the south. But not much else going on, really. Close average heights for the UK. I suspect that would be a rather westerly sort of uh, sort of May. And probably quite showery. But it's month five, so it's not worth worrying about it at all. Uh, and then finally, we're at month number six, which is June. The start of summer 2019 finds an area of above average height centred out to the west of the UK. So we've got an area of high pressure to our west. That would leave us bringing in sort of a cool northwesterly type flow there's no particular trough of uh, below average heights but generally in the summer when you get a ridge you'll also get a corresponding trough and i would suspect the trough would be in that sort of position it's kind of like scandinavia central parts of europe where we're in that white area you'll probably get a trough there so uh the jet stream probably doing something a bit like that could actually lead to quite a cool and unsettled June in that sort of situation with the area of above average heights to west and northwest. But it's six months away, so again, it really isn't worth uh, worrying about that too much. Now, coming back to January with the temperature anomalies, let's go through the temperature anomalies uh, that are associated with those heights. This is how January is being forecast. So a reminder of the height anomaly. That's the height anomaly with a very strong level of northern blocking centred right over the top of Greenland. So we've got a big Greenland high sitting there to our northwest. And yet the temperature anomaly away from northern Scandinavia is milder than average, which just looks completely ridiculous, really. Uh, so we have got some cold and average temperature anomalies across Scandinavia. But otherwise, we're looking at a very mild month if the CFSV2 is uh, right. Um, for the UK and for Ireland, we like coming out close to average or a little bit above average. But I think with such a high level of northern block, we will get cold of an average temperature anomaly. It's not just across northern Scandinavia, but we will get them really in this sort of uh, area, I would have thought. So uh, that kind of area would be at risk of seeing some significantly colder than average weather with such a strong uh, blocking feature over Greenland. The southeast of Europe, so like Italy, Adriatic, uh, Balkans, down to Greece, Turkey, that's okay. If you're cold in the north and the west of Europe, you'll tend to be warmer in the south and the southeast. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, but for the rest, I would shave off at least a couple of degrees there through most parts of central and uh, northern Europe because with the high pressure up here, uh, the jet streams going through there somewhere, you would expect to be pulling down pretty cold air from the north and from the northeast. Of course, if the model is wrong with its height anomaly, we don't get that Greenland blocking, then we may well come away with the mild of an average month. But with such a high level of Greenland blocking, I'd be very surprised uh, to see Europe that much. This is how February's temperature anomaly is looking. Again, it's going for a much colder than average month of Scandinavia. So I know you have people watching up in Scandinavia, in Norway, in Sweden, in Finland, in Denmark. So um, it looks like you're in for a really cold couple of months, actually. The CFS is going for cold in both January and February uh, for you, which is quite unusual. So uh, it looks like you could be really under the, under freezing conditions if a CFS is right up there in Scandinavia. Also going for cold and average month in eastern parts of Europe. Generally, it's a colder, than, a colder month for most parts of Europe. So the UK and Ireland coming out with average temperatures and the milder than average temperatures are like pushed down into southern parts of uh, Europe. But even there, it's not a big not a big deviation. So out of the two months, it definitely thinks that February will be a colder month compared to uh, January. But I would suspect for Northern Europe and also, and include the UK in this, you would expect cold conditions in both January and February based on that uh, high level of blocking across Greenland that we've got in both months. 
that's how March is looking. Month three shows that many uh, sort of central southern parts of Europe are coming away with another milder than average month in uh, March. Northern Europe close to average. Remember, in March, we've got an area of low pressure out to the west of the country, which will bring in a west-southwesterly type wing. So a reversion back to a more westerly flow, more typical flow. So blocking eases away in uh, March, and we get on. Uh, with spring. That's how April's looking. Very pleasant in April. Most parts of Europe coming out uh, a little bit milder than average. Again, very similar to March. In April, we have below average height centre just to our west, which feeds in that westerly wind. So, again, March and April, they're reverse, reverting back to a more typical pattern, which is westerly. Probably quite unsettled, but rather milder as that northern block in the abnormal pattern that we have in January and February with those, that high level of blocking over Greenland uh, eases away. Up to month five, uh, May looks like that. So most parts of Europe coming out milder than average in May as well. Looks like quite a nice spring, really, from a temperature uh, perspective. Uh, for the UK and Ireland, sort of close to average temperatures again uh, during May. And then finally we get to June. And uh, in June, well, the temperature uh, normally uh, is reverting close to average. So uh, what's going on in June to start the summer is that we have an area of high pressure out to the northwest. They didn't really show a trough of low pressure within the 700 millibar heights, but we know there will probably be some corresponding trough somewhere. The most likely position would be there. So the jet stream and the flow will probably be doing something like that. So June could be a rather cool month, but it's month six. So again, it's only uh, for fun uh, and I won't worry about that at all. Finally, precipitation-wise, for January, this is how things are looking. So you'll notice drier than average January being forecast for Iceland, drier than average January being forecast for Greenland, or at least what we can see of Greenland, which is the far southeastern tip. Also, a rather drier than average January forecast for much of northern Scandinavia, so and also for over Svalbard. So this is all indicative of high pressure in the northern latitudes. This is all indicative of high pressure sitting in these areas where it's drier than average. Wetter than average for Spain and Portugal, wetter than average for France, wetter than average for Germany. So you can see where the jet stream is likely to be with all this high pressure up here during January. Uh, it's showing the jet stream being down there somewhere, going through southern and central parts of Europe. And so we will be placed on the cold side of the jet. And I can see no reason why being on the cold side of the jet, we wouldn't be pulling cold air down into the UK and into Ireland. Bear in mind, of course, with the jet stream to our south, any precipitation that does come through as it engages with that cold air could well be wintry. So, looks to me like the CFS is going for a wintry month, although the temperature anomaly doesn't suggest it. Uh, based on what's happening with precipitation, we're close to average, drive and average across Scotland. Uh, based on precipitation and the height anomaly, it does look as though we'd have a decent chance of some pretty potent cold shots during uh, um, January. And this goes on into February. Look at this. We find that it's much drier than average across uh, Scandinavia, uh, across Greenland, I should say, southeastern tip of Greenland, and across Iceland, and also over Scandinavia. It's drier across Scandinavia in uh, February, but it is in January. So if anything, the blocking signal is strengthened across the northern latitudes. Again, you'd expect the uh, jet stream to be going down there somewhere. And although it does show a rather above average precipitation for, the, for Ireland, England and Wales, and with such a large amount of northern blocking, there would have to be a risk of some of that being snow, I would have thought, as it engages with the blocking and with the cold air. So to be honest, January, February... Doesn't really show it on the temperature anomaly, except for Scandinavia and northeastern Europe. But I think both months hold an appreciable level of cold weather. I know it's been a mild winter so far. December is going to come out as a mild and average month. But I don't think this winter is anywhere near finished yet. We go on to March and the uh, precipitation anomaly just looks rather unsettled really in March. So it's above average with precipitation for France, above average uh, precipitation for the U for England. 
Northern Wales and Ireland as well. Uh, so you'd expect us to be bringing in like a westerly, southwesterly flow. So a little bit of a blocking signal for Scandinavia, for Norway, in uh, March. But you'll notice Iceland and Greenland are now going a little bit wetter. So it just implies that low pressure beginning to return to the northern Atlantic after the abnormal blocking in January and February. We're going back towards a more typical pattern in March and that goes on into April as well so fairly weak signals but we do see that the UK, France, Iceland, South East and Greenland all those areas you expect to be a little bit wet if we're in a low pressure westerly pattern all of those areas are coming out a little bit wetter than average through the course of April so March, April revert to a more typical westerly Atlantic flow and then we're into May, and very weak signals for May. If anything, it looks a little bit on the unsettled side, though, for northern parts of Europe. So, again, Scandinavia is a little bit wetter than average. Germany, a little bit wetter than average. Parts of the UK, a little bit wetter than average as well. So, looks like a westerly spring, really, is being forecast here. And, uh, by the way, spring updates will begin in January. We're just having a little break during December from the long-range stuff. But spring updates will begin uh, in January and then finally we're through to month six through to June and this goes against a little bit what I was saying with that uh, height anomaly actually so June is actually coming out dry of an average for the UK for Ireland for France for the low countries remember in June we've got the area of above average heights just out to our west northwest it's in that kind of position uh, so it looks like from precipitation, the corresponding trough is over here somewhere, uh, which is a little bit bizarre. So we would be doing something a bit like that with the flow. The flow doesn't really dip, the jet stream doesn't really dip, so it gets into that kind of position. And so we're actually placed under that area of high pressure across the northwest of Europe. I'm a little bit dubious about that, but in any case, it's six months away, so... I mean, it'll look, uh, it'll go through very many revisions before we get to June, I can assure you of that. So we won't worry about that. Let's come back to January and February. They're both interesting. They both have a strong level of northern blocking centred over green. And they're both suggesting uh, we've got a southerly tracking jet stream. Uh, and to me, they both look indicative of what could be quite wintry months. Out of the two, maybe February a little bit more so than uh, than. Uh, January, but I think they both have wintry potential there, although the temperature anomalies are looking rather mild. Uh, I wouldn't take that at all seriously. As I say, the CFS very often has to be dragged kicking and screaming to cold, cold average temperature anomalies. And if we do get that level of Greenland blocking, uh, I think it's a case of watch out because we could be in for some really quite cold conditions in both January and, interestingly, in February too, which, of course, would be very good news for the Gaz Webb's winter 2018 19 forecast, but we won't say any more about that. And then we go, we revert, we sort of have a reversion to westerlies and a more typical pattern in March and April. Right, that's CFS 6. Let's look ahead uh, for this month. We'll do it all over again in January. Uh, coming up in about a couple of hours, we're going to have the 24th and final Christmas update. Tomorrow, we'll have a regular week to 10-day video update. All the latest on the stratosphere will be included in that. Uh, also got the ECMWF and Metro France uh, seasonal model update. That'll be with you tomorrow afternoon. There may be an ensembles watch tomorrow evening. I'm not sure about that, but there could be. And then Christmas Eve, we've got the uh, weekend forecast. As always, on Christmas Eve, we'll do your weekend forecast for you. And then Christmas Day is the historic video looking at the winter of 1968-1969. I think that'll be a pretty interesting watch. It did have uh, a surprise white Christmas in 1968, and there was a very cold and wintry February. So I think you'll find that quite interesting for your Christmas Day viewing pleasure. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.